What's smiling with it, man? Praise God in Jesus' name. Another day, we're getting it in. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27. Let's get it. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. Let's touch on that, man. We understand that at the end of the day, a lot of times we've been in situations to where maybe somebody was in need and we had the ability to meet their need in real time within that moment. And we chose not to for whatever reason. Maybe it was an inconvenience uh, to how we felt within the moment. Maybe, you know, we told them we'll help them later, you know, whatever it may have been. But in real time, we could have helped these individuals in that moment. Let's understand that we have an obligation to serve as believers. We have an obligation to serve individuals as believers and understanding what it means to give them what is due to them. So at the end of the day, let's, let's truly understand that if we truly break this down, what if just, you know, speculating, what if God treated us in the moment that we were in need and he chose not to do so for, you know, whatever reason. How would that make us feel? And we knew that he had the capability of helping us in need. How would that make us feel? And how would we respond? And moving forward, how would we begin to look at him? Well, let's understand, in, in essence, that's how individuals look at us. Like, think about that, man. We have the ability to serve somebody in need. And we choose not to because we'll look at it as an inconvenience or because it is not benefiting to us. But it is due to them, meaning that we have the ability to meet their need. Think about how prideful that is and, you know, in essence, you know, greed or whatever may be rooting that, whether it's bringing us out of our comfort zone and all of that. And see, this is the problem. We're willing to be served, but we Always have a problem when the roles were reserved when, when the roles are reversed, serving others. And let's truly look at that and understand that at the end of the day, it's not like we're serving somebody else in a manner that we don't have what we need. In this specific passage, it is showing us that we have the ability to meet their needs. We've been given exactly what we need to help, you know, whoever this individual is, you know what I'm saying? And that's what this passage is talking about is truly identifying how sinful it is for us to begin to try to turn somebody away when we have the ability to meet their needs. And see, in the essence, we would look at this like, okay, we need to be understanding that true servitude and, you know, let us serve in a manner to where it costs us something. But in essence, this really isn't costing us anything if we have exactly what somebody needs. Okay, maybe it may cost us some time. Maybe it may cost us some physical strength or maybe in the moment we're moving us for our comfort zone. But that's what we've been called to do. We've been called to serve. We've been called to love our neighbor. We've been called, you know, to separate ourselves from the world and in a manner. And this is how the world treats each other. And think of that, man, when we come to, you know, whether it's our brother or sister or if we came to somebody in need and we knew they had exactly what they needed to be able to meet our needs. And they chose to, you know, turn us away for whatever the reason may have been. Maybe in the moment they felt that they was too busy to meet, you know, our need in real time. Maybe they thought that we, you know, had time to be served later. And we need to understand that comes from our, our arrogance and feeling like that we have an opportunity to serve somebody later. And we and we need to understand that this just doesn't go for when it comes to money or when it comes to food. This goes to when it comes to preaching the gospel. We need to understand that we have the gospel for individuals in real time. And sometimes that's all they're in need of. They're in need of, you know, hearing the gospel. They're in need of, you know, prayer. They're in need of something that we can offer them that has nothing to do with anything when it comes to that is tangible, you know, material things or whatever it may be. And, you know, just to be transparent, I've been in situations before to where we believe that we 
have time. We believe that we got time later on to serve this individual or we can preach the gospel to them later on. And I've been in situations, you know, that I can say in the moment when I could have preached the gospel to somebody that I had something maybe that I felt was more that took, you know what I'm saying, that, that that it took more time or, you know, whatever it may have been that when it came to my primary responsibility in that moment that I was like, you know what, I'm too busy right now. I get with you, though. And then this individual, you know, loses his life or, you know, th this woman, you know what I'm saying, she, uh, you know, gets in a car accident, you know, whatever it may have been. I'm just giving scenarios. But in my personal situation of being transparent, I've had the opportunity to preach the gospel to individuals before when it comes to in my neighborhood or just within the streets. And these individuals mess around and because I thought I could speak with them later on, but they were in need of it right then and there. And I had the ability to preach the gospel to an individual right then and there. And it is my obligation to do so. But I took my life and whatever I had going on within that moment because I felt like, you know, I was going to, I didn't have enough time or I was too busy or, you know, it's going to take me out of my comfort zone or this may cost me some money or, you know, whatever it was within that moment. I didn't take it serious enough to preach the gospel to the individual and this individual you know went to prison for the rest of his life for committing murder you know what i'm saying and this is just some scenarios that i truly have been in and being transparent with some of you know my young rallies or whatever it's been and that's something i got to deal with but we need to understand that like looking at this passage this is what this is talking about when we somebody has been sent to us in need and we have the ability to serve them like I said, whether it's prayer, whether it's the gospel, whether it's uh, they're in need of food, whether they're in need of help with some gas money, whatever it is. And we know that we can meet their need and we choose not to. We're going to answer for that. Because that was an opportunity that was given that we have been obligated to make sure that we serve within that moment that Christ has given us that opportunity to do so. And think about if we had the heart, like, like think of that, like praise God. That he doesn't look at us how we look at other individuals within the moments, within our selfishness or our pride or, you know, whatever we feel that it may cost us when it really isn't costing us nothing. Because at the end of the day, when we signed up to be become to, to become believers, when we receive Christ, we've enlisted into God's army. So our lives aren't our own anymore. And our obligation is to whatever the plan is that God has created for us. And so let us be mindful when we begin to look at individuals that are in need and we have the ability to serve or meet them needs. And we choose not to for whatever reason it may be. We're going to be held accountable for that. And we have an obligation as believers to make sure that we serve and we love our neighbor and we're doing all that we can with the best of our abilities to make sure that we are separating ourselves with the world in the way that we do serve, in the way that we are selfless. Hallelujah, man. But let's make sure that we are not turning individuals away when we have the ability to help. And whatever that need may be within the moment, let us meet it in real time. Let us not tell somebody to come back later. Let us not tell them, you know what I'm saying, we'll get them tomorrow, whatever it is, because that's that's when we become arrogant and feel like we think that we have time. Tomorrow is, isn't promised. And that isn't a cliche statement. 60 seconds from now isn't promised. We don't know when the Lord is going to call us home. So let's make sure that we serve and we're meeting whoever it may be that is coming into our lives. Let's, let's be sure that we're meeting their needs if we have the ability to. And that's what this is speaking about, is making sure that we serve the individuals in the manner that we have the ability to do so. And if God has given us the ability to do so, and we turn these individuals down, we need to repent because we're going to be held accountable for that by the Father. Love y'all, man. Y'all continue to press forward, man. Continue to get in prayer. You know what I'm saying? Continue to dive in this word uh, for the sake of growing closer to Christ, man. Let's not... Let's not jump in this word just to be puffed up with pride and arrogance to feel like, you know, we know more. Let us do it for the sake of growing closer to our father. Hallelujah, man. Y'all be blessed in Jesus name.